Now we're here with Paul. Now Paul, tell me about your filmmaking. Well actually, my technical name is Dr. Paul Jackson. I have a PhD in computer engineering that I received in 1998 from Texas A&M University. I moved here to Seattle after I received my degree and I worked for Boeing for over 10 years doing research and augmented and virtual reality. I got laid off and then I um, was videotaping the work I was doing before I got laid off and then tried to change my career into digital, digital video. So I've been going around shooting a lot of interviews, a lot of events and things like that. I'm also on the board of a, a non-profit video studio called Multimedia Resource Training Institute. And they, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, they're headed by uh, a Ethiopian immigrant, Ethiopian American immigrant, and they're located again at 23rd and Jackson in the Promenade. And so last year, Vulcan bought the Promenade, and so we are now looking for another place to be while they tear it down and rebuild it. And I'm on the board, so I'm not really, you know, making decisions. And so the exec executive director has found a location, and he's talking with the Vulcan to have them maybe sponsor us and give us some assistance. Now, last week, uh, we went to Seed, which is Southeast Seattle um, Entrepreneur Development, and they actually have a space in uh, Columbia City where Tony Benton is having a low-power FM station, and they hold the actual right to the station. And so they were talking about maybe doing a co-collaborative space that we could be in the same spot with the station and be cross-collaborative in communication and stuff like that. And so um, I've been at the studio for over 10 years now. They have a green screen. And with the green screen, I've been able to interview over three dozen Seattle individuals. People like Dr. Lee Russell, who's the first African-American to graduate from what is now Seattle University. Uh, Dr. Charles Mitchell, who, when I interviewed him, was the pre president of Seattle Central College. Before he became the president, he played for the, for the NFL. I was able to interview uh, Tuskegee Airmen. I was able to interview an Air Force astronaut, Livingston Holder, who never made it into space, but his experience went into unmanned aircraft because uh, Livingston was uh, scheduled to go in after the shuttle incident. So when that happened, the explosion, um, they canceled his flight. So even though ne um, he never made it into space, his experiments went in, in unmanned aircraft. So um, what I'm currently doing now, I'm an adjunct professor at the Art Institute of Seattle. I'm teaching a math class there. And at CIFETS earlier this year, or 2016, it was the three A's of Seattle International Film Festival that brought in uh, virtual reality. And so they brought in people like Melanie de la Pena and uh, Tom from Ness and people like that to talk about virtual reality and how to make these 360 movies, right? And so, um, um, there's a company that came over the camera, I'm trying to remember, the Theta, Rico Theta S. And so I convinced the Art Institute to buy a Theta, and I've been using it to shoot some various things. Uh, one of the things I did shoot was the movement of Tent City 3 when it moved from Lake City into University of Washington. I shot that probably back in November or December, and it was one, part of the cinematic challenge. And so there's a group of people here in Seattle that are really involved in 360 cinema, and so it's like 48-hour film challenge. So groups come together, they pitch an idea, and the winners of their teams for the idea get loaned a 360 camera, and they have 48 hours to produce something. And so there have been three of them, and every single time I pitched an idea to do a 10 city. And so fortunately, the last one, since I had access to a theater from the Art Institute, I went ahead and went down to UW and filmed a little bit of the movement from Lake City to University of Washington, and I met up a person from who's an adjunct at uh, Bellevue College. So the two of us went down there and shot some stuff, and it's actually on my YouTube channel. And so what's your YouTube channel? Yeah, it's YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash C slash I brother, the, the letter I brother, and also on Facebook. So facebook.com slash I brother, that's my handle. And so, um, yeah, I consider myself a conscious square nerd, a disruptive technologist, in a sense, I like to go behind different types of technologies and put them together. And uh, most recently, because of the introduction of the 360 vi videos, it's been really fascinating for me to get back into the virtual reality, augmented reality space. And so I've been producing some things and just doing it for fun, basically. Well, you're remarkable. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. But it's really neat that you're here at Tech Dark Fest. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and so the I've been involved in the 70s. 
whatever it is, and the 24 and the 48. Oh, you, okay, yeah, hour? Okay. Those kind of things. And uh, one of them, I filmed them filming a movie. Okay. And so it was kind of a fun little project. Right, okay. But those are really fascinating, quick films. Exactly, they are. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we had about maybe 30, 30, 40 minutes of raw footage, but the challenge only allows about five minutes of video. Right. And so, yeah. So there have been, at the second one that happened at the Birdhouse, uh, it was the same weekend as the Festival Santiata. And so I knew a team that went down there to the Festival Santiata and shot Double Richardson and his uh, museum's Unspoken Truths. They shot the Tuskegee, uh, they shot the, the Buffalo Soldiers and they shot the, the, tam t the tap dancers. And they came up with something really kind of cute and really amazing yeah. because the, the new mindset of 360 video is that you can see all the way around you. So what, where, the, where does the crew go? Yeah. Where's the salmon go? Usually in a movie, they're all in it. They got a, you got a boom mic guy, right? right. You got a, so yeah, everybody's in it. Yeah. So what they're happens all to the crew? Actively participate. Exactly. What happens to the crew? Yeah. And so that's really a fascinating thing about storytelling in that space. And what's really cool is that Google has just come out with a number of videos that are either animated or shot in real time uh, about 360. And so, um, yeah, so, I mean... I haven't used those yet. You haven't? Okay. No, but they, I, I've seen them before, and I've seen videos with right, them before. Right, cardboard, yeah. And they're so just fascinating. They are. Because they're everything live right then. Exactly. Yeah. You, yeah. You, yeah. So, you can't hide any of your mistakes. There you go. <laughs> but what's also interesting is that the editing of that, so even though when you, when you pull it off the camera, it's flat, right? Yeah. But when you put it up on YouTube, it wraps it around. Wow. And so when you, if you put a title on it, the title gets distorted. But there are plugins that you can use from Adobe, not from Adobe, but an Adobe Premiere plugin from Meta, I think the company is, that um, Metal is the company. That And so it kind of has a loop. Well, not it the loop. It turns around itself. No, 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 in the sense that you can put a title up and it doesn't distort the title when you wrap it into 360. Nice. It keeps the title straight. Nice. So that's one of the things, uh, one of the, the effects that you get when you nice. wrap that video back in the 360. And you so, edit it as you go. Exactly. How nice. So yeah, that's again, that's uh, that's the Dober Premiere plugin from Metal. Now, now give us the name of the company that you're on the board of. Uh, it's called Multimedia Resource Training Institute. They're a nonprofit um, digital, digital studio that's headed by Ethiopian American immigrant. And so he's been active, has his 51C3 for the last 10 or 15 years now. And if somebody wants to get a hold of them or get a hold of you, yeah. So How you can, do they get a hold of that? My email is pjackson at mac.com, mac or me or icloud.com. Or um, if you Google um, MMRTI Seattle, that'll take you to that website. Um, one more story. So I mentioned Ethiopia. So there's another gentleman, his name is Ja Davis. He's a retired Boeing manager and he spends about a third of the year in Ethiopia. So what Ya has did. Um, recently he was over there and there was an aviator from the 20s, an African-American pilot whose name is Colonel Robinson, that in the 20s went to Ethiopia to train their pilots because they were having a war with Italy. And so um, he unfortunately uh, transitioned, but nobody really knows about him or they've forgotten about him. And so what Yad did is he had a busk made of him and he went to Ethiopia, the country, and went to Ethiopian Airlines and got a, a, a studio named after him. And because Yah is retired from Boeing and his connections, he was able to get a triple, no, 787 plane that Ethiopian Airlines made and had it renamed and painted with Colonel Robinson's name on it. How nice. And so what's gonna happen now is that since Yah spends a third of the year in Ethiopia, he's got a collection of Ethiopian students over there. And with the studio here, there's a collection of Ethiopian American students here. We're gonna use Google Hangouts to do video conferencing between and do the two stories, countries. And oral history. Exactly. How nice. And so, preserve. Well, it's a, there's an 11 hour time lapse, right? So we're doing, gonna do a live Google Hangout video chat session between students here and students in Ethiopia How in nice. real time. How so we're, nice. I'm orchestrating that right now, trying to get everybody scheduled together and trying to get that straight. So it's gonna happen. Well, thank you very oh, much welcome. for being on my TV show, Public Interest Issue. Okay. You're extremely busy, but I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Okay.